Today on Engineering Newswire, we're touching holograms everywhere, challenging Japan to a giant robot battle, and taking seven giant leaps closer to interstellar travel. NASA has selected seven technology proposals for phase two of its Innovative Advanced Concepts program. Phase one was feasibility. Now the winners have up to $500,000 and two years to explore how they can implement this new technology. And man, did NASA pick some crazy ideas to usher us into the final frontier. The Titan submarine is an interstellar sub that would travel to Saturn's moon and explore the Kraken Mare, the moon's largest body of liquid. The Periscope, a subsurface cave explorer concept that would investigate and map lunar skylights from an orbiting platform. A 3D photocatalytic air processor that could dramatically reduce the size and complexity of life support systems. Non-radioisotope power systems that may enable exploratory missions to sunless solar systems. Actual transformers for extreme environments in lunar missions that shapeshift to power rovers with reflected solar power. Swarm flyby gravimetry, a way to determine asteroid and comet gravity fields and subsurface mass distribution by deploying a swarm of small, low-cost probes during a flyby. And the heliopause electrostatic rapid transit system which could use e-sail propulsion to travel 100 times the distance from the Earth to the Sun in less than 10 years. It's not the same sci-fi tech, but this is like the warp drive that everyone was raving about a few months ago. It's pretty mind-blowing. Megabots recently challenged Suidobashi Heavy Industries to a robot duel, explaining that they have a duty to science fiction lovers of the world to fight the robots to the death. This week, Suidobashi, the Japanese organization that builds and sells human ride robots, accepted the challenge with one condition. Melee combat must be a part of the fight. The two robots that will be participating in the world's first giant robot battle are Japan's Curatus robot and the US's Mark II from Megabot, which the company is calling America's first fully functional giant piloted robot. The Mark II weighs six tons and stands 15 feet tall, but as Megabot admits, it is not the first of its kind. Suidobashi beat them to the punch with the 9,000 pound Curatus, which stands 12 feet tall. Both bots are controlled by a pilot who rides inside the robot, although the Mark II has room for two. But Suidobashi founder Kogoro Kirata is less than impressed by the competition. The bot battle is set to take place in the next year, although no specific date or venue has been set. Japanese company Ariel Burton has created some pretty cool technology that will excite many of you Star Wars lovers out there. Researchers have developed a way to make 3D projected images touch interactive. Soon enough, we could all have those Star Wars style hologram generators in our phones and tablets. The technology focuses laser beams at specific points in the air and then heats up the gases so that they ionize and create pockets of floating plasma. Sometimes the gases got too hot in fact, the first few prototypes were so hot that they could burn leather. Thankfully, the researchers have come up with a cooler solution by turning up the speed at which the system's lasers pulse. Earlier versions pulsed in nanosecond bursts, which contain more energy. The newest version pulses in femtoseconds, which means the plasma bursts have shorter lives but are more frequent. So lucky for us, the bursts won't stay in a single area long enough to burn you. The images do, however, produce tiny shockwaves when touched. Ariel Burton originally started developing this technology as a way to display science in mid-air during emergency situations, but I think it could have much broader applications. And then cue the Star Wars hologram clip and a theme song. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the pd and channel, I'm David Manti, and this has been your Engineering Newswire.